So let's take a quick look at the Angular control value accessor. And basically what this does is it connects elements to the Angular's form API. So right now I just have a form and I have a button to save and then I have a button to disable every input. Right now there's only one input. Um, so let me show you what I have in the code. So I basically have a component called garage and then I have another component called car and I'll get into that one in a second. So my garage component just has a form that's wrapped in a form group, which is a reactive form in Angular. And this is my input right here. I just have a regular input with the form control name of owner. And so that ties into this form, whoops, this form right here. This form has basically two form controls, owner and car one. And I also have this validation message here. Um, so I'll show you that really quick. So as soon as you type and remove, it'll tell you that it's required. Um, so that's just my little message there. And then when you hit disabled, then you can no longer type into the field. So now let's say that I wanna add a custom component here, um, but I want it to be part of the form group, right? So let me show you what I mean, right? So I have this car component and inside of this car component is just a regular input, nothing special. And I'm gonna output this component here, but I want it to act as part of the form. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna copy this input and I'm gonna paste all the same things, but I'm gonna remove the input itself. And instead I'm gonna add my component, which is app car. Then I will change this. And so I already have a form control for this car one, right? So that's this one right here. Um, so I've added that in there, right? And let me take a look at what this looks like, right? So everything looks fine. However, when I type in and I remove everything, it doesn't tell me that it's required. And when I hit disable, it doesn't work on this form, even though, um, my function is actually disabling every form control, right? So I have two and basically my function, all it does is it loops through every form control and it disables it, right? So car one actually is getting disabled and I'll show you that really quick. I'll hit save, which basically just logs it for right now. If you go to the controls of the form and you go to form one or car one, you see that the status is actually set to disabled. So this is disabled, but Right now, this has no way of knowing that this is the form control that I specified, right? Because of course you have to provide it a form control name for this to work, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and paste it here, but this time I'll use the, car, the form control that I have, again, right here, car one. So I have to specify that name. And then I'm also gonna copy this validation message um, down here, whoops, forgot a quotation. And then I'll just change everything to car one. Now you'll notice that as soon as I save that, I get this error here that says no value accessor for form control. So this is where you need to implement that control value accessor in order to communicate between the forms API of Angular and this element here. So what you need to do is go into the component, right? This app car component. So go into that component. And then over here at the top, you have to say implements control value accessor, right? And that comes from the Angular forms um, library. Um, now with this interface, you also have to implement some methods, right? And that's why I'm getting this red underline here because Visual Studio Code is basically telling me, hey, you need to implement some methods. Now, if you have VS Code, you can implement them automatically by clicking there and it will automatically add all those methods for you. But if you don't have VS Code, then that's fine. 
you can just copy and you can just copy, um, you know, what I have on the screen here. So then next you have to add one more thing and right below here, you want to pass in comma and then say providers, which is an array of objects. So I'll pass in my first object and it's going to say provide ng underscore value accessor. You also want to import that from the Angular forms. And then followed by, you want to say use existing, right? And we can just say forward ref, which comes from the Angular core. And then inside of the parentheses of forward ref, you pass in a function like this that points to the car component, right? And this is basically saying there's already a value accessor um, for this for this input, right? So just use the one that it already exists, right? Which is coming from here, from my form. And then after that, you want to say use, um, I'm sorry, not use, multi, and then true. All right, so then below here, I'm going to provide, I'm going to create a variable called value type string, and that's just going to hold the value that comes in from my input, right? I know that the value is going to be a string because I've assigned that here when I created the form, right? It's a string. So that's the form that, I mean, that's the value that's, that's going to be held here. So I'm going to copy that and assign it to this input so that it will be displayed. So I'll just say value equals, and then my variable. Now back over in the garage component, I'm also going to provide a default value here just so that I know that this is working. So I'll just say forward. And so that value should get passed over here. Now, now let's get into what these functions are. So this right value, what this right value does is whenever there is a value that comes in from, from the component that's hosting this, so my garage component, if it has a value preset, which mine does, I just gave it this value, right? Then it's going to call right value. Well, it's going to call it no matter what. Um, but what gets passed is any value that might be assigned to it, right? So I'll just rename this to value. It's going to be of type string, right? So since I assigned it forward, then this is going to pass me the string of forward. So now I can say this dot value equals value. That'll grab that value. Now, in case we don't have a default value, I don't want to assign undefined. So I'll just say, if value is true, then give it a value. If not, just give it an empty string. Okay. So I'm going to comment these out for right now. And we'll get to those in a second. For right now, I just want to save everything and see if this is working. So you shouldn't see that error anymore. And then you should see that default value there now in the input. So now it recognizes that this is a valid um, input. And now you'll see when I hit disable, it disables this top one, but it doesn't disable the, the form here, right? And also, um, if you delete the value, it doesn't tell you that it's required, okay? So we don't have the full capabilities yet um, because we haven't finished mapping these here. And going back to the garage component, I'm gonna show you a few other things. So at the top here, I'm gonna just create a heading um, to show you a few things with my form. So just bear with me for a second. Um, so I'll say form, and then I'm going to get the form control called car1, and I'm going to log its value for right now. So I'll say value, and then I'm going to do this a few more times. So this one instead will say um, touched, whether or not the form's been touched. This one's going to say dirty. And then lastly, this one will tell me if it has an error. So you can do that with has error and then pass in the name of the specific error that you're looking for, which mine is just checking to see if it has the error of required, right? Because I've specified that this form control, this input should be required. So I should have an error if the field is not filled in. So let's go take a look at what we have. 
Right now it tells me that the value is forward. But if I change this, notice that the value never changes, okay? That's because we haven't registered this on change function, okay? That's what that does. Then you see that it says touch false. And then if I, you know, I've already touched this input and focused out of it, but you notice it still says false. That's because we haven't registered this one. And then lastly, the disable's not working because of course we haven't set um, that disabled state there. And then lastly, you'll notice that if I delete the value, it doesn't give me that error of required, but that's really because this value is hard grained in here. Um, if I were to not provide a default value, then that error would be here, okay? Because the form control is wired up properly, so it, it, it'll know if it has a value or not. So let's implement these, um, these methods that came from the interface to um, correctly get those messages. So first what I'm gonna do, so basically uh, what, what this does is when this initially loads, it basically tell, it asks you to register your on change function, right? So basically you define the function here and then you assign it the function that comes in from the control value accessor and then it takes care of it for you. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna create a function here called on change and it's not gonna return anything and then one called on touched. And then finally, I'm gonna create a variable called um, disabled, which is a Boolean. So then now here, when this comes in, right, when this initially loads, it's gonna pass in the function, you just need to assign it. So I can do this dot on change equals function. And then here I can do this dot on touched, whoops, equals function. And then this dot disabled equals is disabled. Okay. So now we actually need to implement all four of these in the view, right? So first we're going to bind to that variable. So disabled equals disabled. So once disabled equals true, it's going to disable this input. So for the on change, you want to call that anytime the value changes. So I don't have any functions in here that's changing the value. But if you did, like if you had more logic in here, you want to make sure that you call that function the on change anytime that value changes. Otherwise it won't register. So what you can do here, you can bind to an event and call that. So let me tell you, let me explain a little bit what I mean. So this is an input. And so every time a value changes here, the input event is going to get called. So I can bind to that. I can say on input, call the on change event, but I also need to give it the new value. So I can say event dot target dot value. So what that's going to do is anytime a value is, is changed is this event gets called this input, right? So the, the event itself is the input event. The target is this element. And then the value of course is the value from this element. So that's gonna pass it to the event, which is gonna register it and send it back. Okay, and you'll see that now. So you'll see the value here is forward, but then as soon as I keep typing, now the value is being changed. So now let's look at the untouched. So what you do for this one, same thing, I'll say the blur event, which is when you, when you leave an input, when you focus out of it, we'll say untouched. Okay, so now let's test that one. We'll click here and then focus out and you'll see it gets set to true, okay? Okay, and then let's test out the disable. You'll see now it actually is disabling it. And then I'm also going to test the error and you'll see you get the error required there.